Now, Judson, we, we, we were talking earlier, and and you made the mention, because uh, anybody who's known me for, for more than five minutes knows that I'm a duck hunter, and that's what I really enjoy doing. Um, but you're a sportsman as well, correct? That's correct. I, I grew up in uh, Bowman, South Carolina, so I grew up, you know, rabbit hunting, deer hunting, squirrel hunting, um, avid fisherman. Um, I have been duck hunting. I can't say I, I'd, I'd love to do it, but it's like anything else. If I started doing it, I'd probably spend more money and I'd get in trouble. <laughs> so I, I'd love to learn how to do it, but I'd probably get in trouble. Right. My wife would cut me back real quick. But, uh, no, I'm an avid sportsman. You know, that's, that's a big takeaway message I want people to understand. Is, you know, we're not out here, you know, to try to take, you know, the fun from anybody. We're all avid sportsmen. So we, we hate to see the lakes get in the situation. We're trying to do our very best on a daily basis to make it, make it, you know, the best for everybody in South Carolina. So we just want everybody to remember that. that yeah. you know, if you see anything, please don't hesitate. Reach out to us because we do care. Yeah. Okay. And I'll be leaving a, 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 in the description below, I'm going to be leaving a link to um, the Santee Cooper website and along with a phone number, and that'll be down below. Um, now, we had also talked about... Uh, I don't want to say reintroducing. Maybe that's not the right word. Yeah. That I'm, but we were talking earlier about um, um, uh, vegetation, project. ve vegetation yeah. projects, the uh, eelgrass. I believe y'all, yeah. uh, we talked about it and some other things. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep. So this past um, year, well, 2019, we did a project on the Sandy Cooper system where we were trying to move or introduce and get reestablished Vallisneria in some of the areas. So Vallisneria eelgrass is a common name, is a native um, submerged plant that has a lot of benefits for fish, for fish and for waterfowl. Um, so Judson actually headed that project, project up and um, along with that we did some water shield, um, which is another plant that is native and beneficial for waterfowl. So we did move that around on the system. Um, I would caution people when we're moving vegetation to think about what you could be moving with it That's right. so when we when we did this project the all the vegetation was screened properly um, to make sure we weren't moving around invasive species into areas that we didn't have it already so Justin might want to add a little bit to that the revegetation project that we did because that was his our whole team participated but he was the brains and he he did all the um, planning and coordination and looking at the soil type and things like that for it that's so. right so um, you know one big takeaway I want people to understand with that is, you know, they, they hear about our group a lot and they hear about us, you know, you know, going out there and just, you know, treating, you know, aquatic plants. But we, we are trying to reintroduce some native beneficial vegetation. Um, eelgrass is, a, is an excellent submerged vegetation. And people that like hydrilla, it provides the exact same benefits, but it's native. And it also allows for some diversity out there, whereas hydrilla become a monoculture. And it, it likes, you know, alkaline sediment. So a little bit higher um, pH, and then water shield or Brasenia shrebri, it likes kind of it, it would it would thrive in an environment like this that we're sitting in right now. But the problem is you have a plant like this that'll go and take over an area, and it'll push out your native species. If you could have this same area covered in water shield, you'd see a lot more ducks. It would come in to feed on it. So that's what we're going to be working on. You know, it's an ongoing effort. Um, we had some good success this past um, past summer. We saw what worked. Um, we saw some stuff that didn't work. But we, we learned a lot, and it's still going to be an ongoing effort to try to move back some native vegetation where it had been historically, maybe introduce it in some areas that hadn't been before just to help, you know, with wildlife. And uh, the big thing that we strive for is, you know, we're not just about, you know, looking out for the ducks or the fish. We're looking at everything. So, you know, you just got to keep that in mind that, you know, we're not catering to just one group. We're looking out for the entire ecosystem. And the plants that we're trying to move around will do just that. And and these, these plants, I mean, even the, the eelgrass, that's going to help our fisheries from... From, from predators such as this, and I call it what it is, the dreaded comorant <laughs> that's been, you know, it's infested a, a lot of lake systems up and down, you know, the, you know, the Atlantic Flyway, you know, but these fish don't have a place to go. And that's right. So I'll, I'll touch on it. Well, so it's like the bottom up, right? So, you, you know, you get Valsanera Americana or American eelgrass established in a location, you know, it's going to grow up and it's going to slow water water flow, right? So then a lot of your sediment can drop out and the plant loves that, it likes low, low turbidity. Then you have, you know, bacteria and algae start to grow on the plant. Then you have little microinvertebrates that go in and start to eat that algae. You have dragonfly larvae, you have mayfly larvae, you have, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then you have smaller fish to come eat that and then it just, you can imagine it just works its, its way up. So you have yeah. sunfish that come, then the bass chase the sunfish. You know, the, the ducks, they go in there, they like to, you know, eat the, the little invertebrates that are on the vegetation as well. So 
you can imagine when you move in a, a native species that's not going to take over, you, you help everything else, and that's that's what we're trying to do. That sounds great, man. I, and you know, we, we I'm glad y'all came out. I mean, I mean, there was a you know, you I know in the beginning you wanted a grid coordinates, but I think after you seen this area. I don't know if y'all would have yeah. found it. No, sure. We're appreciative of anybody calling us like that and building relationships, and that's really where we're at, you know, where our program is going. Uh, I tell people all the time one of the biggest pieces of our job, probably the most important piece of our job, is community outreach and building relationships with people. I mean, it, we have a very small group. It's it's six of us that's all right. together, but technically really only four people that cover 170,000 acres doing aquatic plant control. Our unit also is responsible for all the water quality on our system. Yep. Um, so we do other sampling services within Santee Cooper for our power stations, our generating stations. So our group is, you know, We're we cover a lot of ground. Um, so anybody that can contact us and say, hey, just like Matt, you know, just like you did, call it. We see, I saw something that doesn't look normal to me. It's not, it's never been here before. Um, send us a picture, send us a point, take us out like Matt was willing to do. Um, I mean, we have the equipment to get places, um, but some of these places we've never been to. I'll, I'll be quite frank that I have never, I've been in this job for 13 years, and this is my first time in this hole. Um, it has been treated before by aerial um, for cut grass, but I have not been personally in a boat in this aerial, in this area. So, okay. appreciate that. And, yeah, <laughs> and we got, you're going to put the link in the bottom. I'm going to put the link in the, the, the link. Uh, to contact us. To contact you. Everything will be in the description. Yeah. Um, and I. Again, I want to thank y'all for coming out because um, this has been one of my little projects here, uh, trying to figure out what this was because I didn't actually see this. I, guys, I want you to understand the 2018-2019 duck season, this was not here. I started seeing it um, the summer of 2019 is when I started seeing this stuff coming in here. And because of the warm temperatures, um, uh, we had a you know, very warm uh, winter, this stuff has taken over. And years that I've hunted in this area, we shot a lot of ducks. But we, did, we didn't even see half the ducks uh, this year that we that we've normally see, even in warm weather years, because this stuff is just is killing this, this area. Um, I, th I think it was something else you wanted to... Yeah, I was going to say that even if you... It, and like Judson touched on earlier, there's different stages of this plant. So when we first found it, um, it there was a literally a piece of leaf that was the size of my fingernail. And it was mixed in with duckweed. And, you know, we all... You get used to seeing duckweed if you're not really looking for different types of plants in it. So there was something that was a little bit, like, darker, like army colored is what we called it. And um, and I was like, that looks, you know, that that's something different. Actually, one of the guys that was surveying with us pointed it out. Um, and so it looks, it has different growth stages. So it'll be like a really fine or small leaf and then it'll spread out. And then this is what we call tertiary where it starts stacking and you get these larger leaves and it stacks on top of itself. Right. So, um, right. it's a super fat, it can grow super fast. So it, in four to five days when the, um, no, temperatures, hold it there. There you go. Yeah. When the temperatures are ideal, Oops. it can double in biomass in four to five days. So you could okay. be in here one day and then you come back a week later and it's the biomass is doubled and it just keeps going. Um, so it does reproduce exponentially. Um, you might have a one by one foot and then a two by two and four by four and then it just goes every four to five days when the temperatures are right. And July and it's hot and humid in <laughs> South Carolina. And so, uh, yeah, so just what you said that this mild winter did not help us out. It's kind of the same struggles they've been having in Louisiana. Um, we're, we're in the same, you know, temperate kind of um, weather patterns as Louisiana or northern Louisiana, I should say. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at on that. Mother Nature gave us a little knee up a few years ago when we had that hard winter. Um, hopefully this winter will be the same. Maybe she'll help us out a little bit and give us a, a harsher winter so that it can um, take out some of these plants. It'll be here. It can always, you know, get up in some cut grass or get up where it's insulated just enough to survive. But overall, a cold winter would help reduce right. the biomass. Good deal. I want to share a, a quick ID tip with everybody too. If you are out there, it's easy. All right, let me get up and kind of walk it's, over to you. It's um, it's easy to see on this tertiary stage. You don't even really need any magnification, but you can you can test it on the primary stage, which is like Casey said, it's about the size of your fingernail, and it doesn't look this kind of meaty looking. Um, if you look on the leaf, you can see these little trichomes. 
and they almost look like an egg beater and the little things have kind of like it kind of connects like my fingers here and that's a good way and a, and a trick you can do is when you're in the field just about everybody's got a smartphone now these days you can take it and take a picture of this and then take it and spread it with your fingers and you can ID the plant like that um, I do want to make everyone aware this is Salvinia molester or giant Salvinia that we've been talking about there is another species this um, common Salvinia Salvinia minima that also has trichomes but instead of being connected like an egg beater they, they stand open like this and the plant doesn't develop this like tertiary stage like the giant Salvinia does so just kind of be aware of that when you're out in the, out in the field yeah. Have we seen that that other one? Yeah, we have. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have all the yeah. the technical. We do, we do have common salvinia. That's actually what we found first. Um, in well, we found it in 2016. Um, we found giant salvinia in 2017. So, good common rule for me is when you see something that you think is salvinia, any salvinia to me yeah. is 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 not good. They're both they're both invasives. By far, giant salvinia is the worser is the worst of the two. I should say worser. That's the worser of the two. <laughs> worser. It's more aggressive. It's, yeah, it's 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 um, the hardest, uh, to, the biggest challenge, I should say. But um, yeah, if you see anything that is salvinia, whether it be common or giant, um, you can send us an email or give us a call. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, again, I, I, again, I just want to thank Casey and, and Judson for coming out here. And if you do like this kind of these kind of videos, these conservation type videos, here's what I need you to do. I need you to subscribe to my channel, Daddy Duck 365. I need you to like and I need you to comment for me. Uh, and if you can't get a hold of them, feel free. Uh, you can you can contact me th through YouTube on the in the comment section, or you can send me uh, a message. Uh, Facebook, Daddy Duck. 365 on Facebook. Also, I have an email, Daddy Duck 365, uh, as far as my email. So, if you, for whatever reason, you cannot get in touch with me, just something you see, shoot me an email, shoot me a message, you know, leave a comment down below, and I will get it to them. I have not a problem with doing that because we all need to come together with this. Um, we need to we need to get this bad stuff out of here, and we need to put good food in here for our for our ducks and geese. Anyway, I'm Matt, this is Daddy Duck 365 and we'll see you next time.